Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the United Way for your Manchester United versus Manchester United play ratings for the game against Fulham. Oh, God. I mean, I was in a good humour now. Uh, well, I was until I started this. Um, Manchester United have lost 2-1 to Fulham at Old Trafford. Um, Fulham's two goals coming from uh, Bassi and a late winner from Alex Iwobi. And obviously, Maguire did get his equaliser. But it looked like we were going to get the point. And we could have got a potential three, but... Look, we didn't deserve anything out of the game. Uh, I will go through my play ratings. Uh, six being the average, ten being best. No one's getting a stone. No one's even getting a seven today. The six is probably the highest. But again, please let us know your thoughts in the comments uh, on the game. Give us your play ratings, player of the match, rate and high, rate the subs. Uh, you don't have to rate Ahmad. I won't be rating Ahmad or Anthony because we came on pretty late in the game. But yeah, let's start it off. I tried to come. I tried to come out with a smile on my face. I am happy because another team, local to me, won't. But yeah, we'll, we'll move in. Uh, we'll move on. Sorry. So I'll start off with Andre Onana. Um, but in fairness, Andre Onana made a few good saves today. Um, probably kept in the game a few times. But you know, the the the, the goal from Alex Iwobi. Well, the winner from Alex Iwobi. Onana should die for that. He he should at least attempt it. There's been a few times this season where um, Onana has just let the ball slide through. You can't be doing that. You know what I mean? You have to die for it. Even if you don't think you're going to get to it, still go for it. You know what I mean? He, he, he just cannot be presumed that he wasn't going to go for it. He didn't make it. He didn't really. He made a few good pass, a few good passes long, mostly to Bruno Fernandes. Um, and look, I felt like we could have been better today. Again, the fourth goal Fulham scored, you can save that. No one saves that. It's it's hard, it's high. You know, the, the Bassi hits it with hit it with power and puts a good bit of height onto it and it goes in. There's no saving that I can't fault him for that. For the second goal, yeah, and he made a few good saves today. And people may be saying I'm being too generous, people may say I'm being too um mean, but I'm gonna give him a five. That, that, that's all I'm going to do. I just feel like that goal that they scored in the end, he could have done better. He did make a few good saves, mind you. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give Andrew on a five. Next up is Victor Lindelof, who played left back. Um, look, Lindelof left back today. How do I feel about that? I don't feel positive with Lindelof being left back. Uh, you could tell we missed Luke Shaw or even a Reggie on, on, um, on that left-hand side today playing left back. There was, he's not quick, Lindelof. He can't overlap. He can't do what Luke Shaw does. Um, can't even do what Diogo Dallo does. I know Lindelof can do a good job there, but he can't do a good job there against a full. You can get away with it against maybe Luton Town, Sheffield United, Borley. I'd even go as far to say maybe, I don't know, um, Crystal Palace maybe. Um, no disrespect, but Fulham, who had a Wobie, Wilson, yeah, it, it, it just wasn't to be today for Victor Lindelof and uh, I just don't rate him on the left hand side. I'm not giving him the strain because I don't rate him playing left back. I just feel like there's a few times today where he just wasn't great and um, he came off in the end, I think, with a, with a, with a cramp or something like that. But he, he basically had to, it was forced that he had to come off because uh, he kind of hurt himself uh, near the end of the game. Um, and again, that just goes to show we couldn't handle with the pace of the Fulham attack. Um, and look, he was up against Wilson, who he's not really, he's fast, but he's not the could over read pace or Dan James. So it just goes to show. Uh, but he's still a good, fast player, uh, Wilson. But uh, look, again, I'm going to give Lindell off a five. Um, and again, people may say I'm being too harsh or being too generous. I don't know. I don't care. Uh, I really, really don't. But yeah, for that, I'm going to give Victor Lindelof a five. I just don't think him left back can walk. I hope Ten Hag, uh, Rico, again, he can't, again, in fairness to Ten Hag and Lindelof, you know, I'll start with Ten Hag. He would love to have Luke Shaw playing left back. If Luke Shaw was available today or Reggion, he plays one of them too, right? If Reggion's on the bench today, it's Reggion. Obviously, that would be in Luke Shaw's injury. You know, it is forced upon both, you know what I mean? And Lindelof has played left back before and right back but you know I remember him playing I think it was right back against Atletico Madrid um, 
when Ralph Rangnick was was interim, and he didn't really do a job there, did he? And people were like, "What the hell? I don't want to see him play there again." And he's playing there. He's playing left back this time. And uh, look, I'm not hating that Ten Hag for playing Lindelof there. I had no, didn't know there was no choice. I predicted us to play Lindelof left back. There was no surprise. But you know, with Luke Shaw being out for I think about uh, was it three months. Yeah, we, we we have to look into at least other to play. Play someone who play get a left back who through the academy, free agents who can not do what Luke Shaw does, but similar. He has a bit of pace. We can't recall really Alvaro Fernandez. I thought well, Brandon Williams doesn't do enough for me going forward. I don't really rate him. Uh, obviously, we terminated Reggion's loan. I don't know why. We can't play Dallow left back because Ram Zach is injured. And um, look, maybe it would have been a, on another day if Ram Zach is fit. You may see a Dallow left back, Ram Zach a right back, or Ram Zach a left back, Dallow right back. You may see one of them too. But for that, I'm just going to give it a off of five. Just don't think he was added today for me. And uh, just didn't do a lot of overlapping runs, which we kind of have a bit, bit of success on in, in recent times. Uh, but yeah, so next up is Arnie McGuire. Look, he got the goal today. Uh, he, he he got the goal today. The defence rate today was a bit flat. And look, I'm looking at my player ratings here from the defence, and um, they're pretty all the same. It's a five. And I want to... People will be like, Dean, what are you doing? You're doing five. You got the goal. Maguire today... Was, uh, not just Maguire, but the defence today for me just didn't really get stuck in enough. Didn't make challenges. Or too afraid. Pussy footing around. Neaty picking. You know, again, I know Maguire got the goal. Um, but for the Fulham winner, take on Anna besides, even though I feel like I should have went for it. Regardless. Just go for it. Even if it goes in, at least we can say you went for it. Um, that'd be my thing as a goalkeeper. And I played goalkeeper before and I've conceded goals, but I've still went for it. Even if I even if I know inside it's going in before I dive, I still go for it. Everyone does, you know. Uh, but that's just me being me. Um, don't worry, I'm not going pro just for anyone out there. I know big shame to other clubs. Um but no, look, listen, I sort of I like McGuire. So you, you, he's, his form has turned around. I felt like his form post, uh, sorry, pre-injury was better than it is post-injury, but that's to be expected. Um, I didn't really put a foot wrong, but I just feel like his pace again, his decision making, um, you know, get a challenge in. I'll be, I'm being honest with you, I, and people may say no, you wouldn't, but it was McGuire up against Adama Traore. McGuire didn't make the challenge because he was on a yellow. Would I be mad to say if it was me on that yellow or Leecher or Raphael Varane or a Johnny Evans or even a Victor Lindelof or even a Luke Shaw, whatever? Do they make do they do they do they risk it? Do they just risk taking for the team? Do they do that? Or do they be like, oh you know, well I'm only yellow, I don't really want to get I don't want to miss you know, I don't want to miss the game against Man City or the game against Nottingham Forest. Get the fuck so in. You're a Manchester United player. You know what I mean? <clears throat> You're a Manchester United player. And uh, look, listen, I don't think the defence did bad, done bad today, but didn't do great either. Fulham were all over. They were all over our midfield, our defence, and our attack. But McGuire, for me, gets a five. Look, I may, I should, maybe someone say I should give him a 5.5 or a six, but the goal doesn't do enough for me in the end, personally. Next up is Raphael Varane. Um, look, listen, Raphael Varane today, probably similar to Maguire. Um, it's what you kind of expect from Varane. You know, if he doesn't play well, this is what you get. Um, the defence today, I just feel like wasn't great. I felt like Fulham should have scored more today, I'll be honest. But when Anna maybe safe was in Paris as well. Um <laughs> And uh, look, because I don't really, honestly, I don't really have much to speak about Rafael Varane, you know. I, I actually don't, surprisingly enough. I don't really have a, a, a lot to say about Rafael Varane. And that may not be a surprise to people, because I'm a bit of a mom bag when it comes to just the other players. But that's how it is. You're passionate. You love the team. You know, I do content for the lads. I, I love it. Um. So, yeah, look, I, 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 I just don't know what to kind of say about Rafael Varane. Um... It's sort of hard to do what you can when 
the, the players around you aren't really playing well. Um, again, his pace is always a problem for me. Um, I just feel like Rafael Varane just doesn't look, doesn't seem to be selling. And that, that, that may be weird to say that, but I watched Varane today against Fulham, or whatever day I'm watching this. I watched Varane play against Fulham on the 24th of February, 2024, right? Um, and I just, I just don't know what to make of him. I just don't feel like him and Maguire walk. I actually feel like Varane and Johnny Evans walk more. And that may sound a bit crazy, optimistic, whatever you want to... I wouldn't even say optimistic, that's people, you know, whatever. But I just feel like Varane settles with Leitcha and Johnny Evans over Maguire. And some may, and that may be the same with Harry Maguire. He may settle with Evans, Leitcha, whatever. But that's just my kind of thing. But look, I'm just going to give Rafael Varane a point. And yeah, I don't really have much to say about him. I'll be brutally honest with you. We lost, so yeah. Maybe, again, I feel like he could have done better as well. This, what I spoke about Maguire is what I'll say about Rafael Brown. You know, that's, that, that'll be it. Next up is the, probably the fullback who's been on fourth match this year. The two is Diogo Dallo. Uh, Diogo Dallo today, oh, I mean, let me think. A few times where he was off the line. Uh, I felt like his decision-making wasn't to be. He didn't really put a lot of balls into the box overlapping decision making very very flat I look from the from Onana right up to from the goalkeeper up to a striker we are flat poor weak decision making was poor Dallow today just wasn't at it today he just wasn't at the races and I really hope it was just one of those days where no one's 100% and we go and play for us now on Wednesday in the FA Cup and I mean, we have Manchester City next, so we oh god, it gets tough. But look, that's just how I think it's Manchester City next weekend, isn't it? Next Sunday, but yeah, that look for me today just wasn't to be. And again, I'm just going to give him a five. We'll move on. Next up, Casemiro. Casemiro came off with a head injury. Um. Look, he could have played 150 minutes, 190 minutes. He just didn't play well today. The midfield today was a bit too wide open for me. Casemiro just wasn't great today. Casemiro, since the start of the season, pre-injury and post-injury, has not been it. I cannot believe I'm saying this. No, I'm not going to say it. I will say it. I wouldn't mind if we sold him in the summer. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind if we sold him in the summer. If performances don't improve between now and the summer, I'd consider selling. Whoops, I'd consider selling. Them. And some may say, yeah, they're no stupid. I may be, but it is what it is. I consider selling them. I'm going to give them a four. I'm going to give Casemiro a four. This wasn't it today. Very, very poor. I don't know where the Casemiro of last season went to. Just doesn't look bothered. Just again, a bit like well, Varane, in my opinion, and even Marcus Rashford. Just doesn't seem to be, just doesn't want to settle, doesn't seem to be settling. Performances aren't that it. Um, Decision making, marking, tack, tackling. He's fucking shy at tackling. My Jews. Um, yeah, I just don't know what it is with, 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 with Casemiro these past couple of weeks, these past few months, in fact, since the start of the season. Um, and it does worry me. And four has probably been a bit too bad because I just just not to be it for me today. And um, honestly, I I actually think if we had say like you look at Manchester City or Liverpool, if we had like say in McAllister, I think he you know, not even a call, but someone similar to you know if we had similar to a Rodri on the bench, Casemiro doesn't blame. But yeah. Next up, Kobe Mainu. Kobe today, again, he's a young lad, and I'm probably being a bit too biased. I have given him a five. Obviously, I'm going to be biased. I can't be biased. Uh, Kobe Mainu, I gave him a five due to he didn't play the full 90. I think he played like 85, 89. I think he did play 90 minutes, but he came off uh, late on, uh, basically to throw another attacker onto the pitch to try and get us that draw at that time um look i didn't think he was as racist today i, I thought he listened he was better than casemiro but there was a time it was a time today a few times in the game where 
Mainu was too far forward and Casemiro was on his own, but Casemiro wasn't near the man he was meant to be marking. And uh, that's a big concern for me. Um he did he tried to get stuck in. He did get stuck in in fairness. He few passes were good. The passing was poor today, but the few that were made and that were successful were good. Copy Mainu. I'm just gonna give him a five. Wasn't really added today, but look, he's only young, you know. I know I you know, I can say people are like, well, how come he's getting away with and Casemiro isn't? Does levels, you know, you have a Champions League winner versus a lad who, you know, hasn't won a Champions League, he wants to win Champions League and be one of the best midfielders in the world for Manchester United and be successful and win titles and trophies and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, for me today, five for Cobby. Next up, our, ma- our captain, Bruno Fernandes. Um, look, Bruno, 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 Bruno. I don't know where the Bruno of 2020 has gone when we, won- when we signed him. Where's the Bruno gone? That when we played him, he had a great game. He was a, a good, he was a positive impact on the squad. Where has he gone? He's been gone since Ronaldo came. We were all saying, well, you know, Ronaldo, Bruno, just some walking there. Ronaldo's gone. It's a bit weird because Bruno plays well in the Portuguese team, but for Manchester United, he doesn't. So is it the players around him? Is it Bruno Fernandes? Does he just not fancy? You know, another couple of years, I'm not just seeing United. Is he being forced upon? I just thought, the one thing about Bruno is he puts in a, he, he puts in a few miles in the tank. He presses he presses a lot, but, you know, his, his crosses into the box, his decision-making, his shooting. He just doesn't seem confident in himself anymore. He just doesn't seem confident in Bruno anymore. I really, really don't like saying that. Uh, I, Bruno Fernandes, for me, today gets a five. A lot, most of the team gets a five. Um, yeah. You know, that's just how it is for me. And it's a shame because I like Bruno and I, I wouldn't sell him. I, I, I wouldn't. You don't want to have a top class replacement for him like a Verts, um, a Musiala. That's how far I'm going. But I'd want that. I'm not saying Bruno's near them or there in his levels, but you need to look at a Verts at Bayer Leverkusen or the Musiala at um, Bayer Munich, one of them two. I think they're the most, the best attacking midfielders in the world. Um, outside, you know, in the Bundesliga, is what I'll say. Um, but yeah, Bruno just doesn't seem to be added today. He doesn't seem confident in his decision making, his passing, his shooting. Just doesn't seem to be. I need a captain, by the way. He's a captain. He's the leader. He's meant to be a leader on the pitch. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't seem to be at the races today, or at all, which is a worry because. Rule on him. He's meant to be our attack midfielder. He's meant to be. He's meant to be our playmaker, and just not seem to be. Can't tell you last time he scored. But look, next up is Garnacho. Look, I think the only positive today is Garnacho. He got stuck in a lot. He again, he wasn't great today. I'll be honest, but he got stuck in a lot. Put in a good battle. Had a few opportunities. Was a threat when he got into the box in the second half. Was denied. A, was denied a goal, let's say two or three times in the first half, and a few good little glimpses in the second half. Probably our most positive player on the pitch, and I'm going to give him a six. Um, and that's the reason being because most po- probably a most positive player in the pitch got stuck in. Um, and yeah, that's just mainly why I'm, I'm, I'm giving it because he got we created a lot more, and uh, he was he's probably one of our, but well, he was the Bryce Park up top. That's just what I'm going to say. Next up is Amari Forson. Again, please let us know your player ratings and let us know your thoughts on my player ratings as well. Amari Forson, look, we'll start off off the back and we'll give him a five. Uh, look, he's his first, it was his Premier League debut for Manchester United, his, his first Premier League start for Manchester United. Uh, I know he came on a few times in the Premier League, but this is his first Premier League start. This is his debut start for Manchester United in the Premier League. Um, he was meant to be, he was replacing um, Rasmus. Um, Look at Tom Mary Force on today. Look, he's a young lad, you know. I wasn't expecting him to play like Rasmus or Garnacho or a Cobby Mainu or you know, even an Ahmad um, or a Palistri. It takes time for these players to get up there. Now Garnacho say I have more Garnacho and Cobby Mainu and even Camboala, by the way. Um and look, I didn't think he was bad today. He came off, but I didn't think he was bad today. He's a young lad. I cannot sit here and say, oh, he was this, this, and this, blah, 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 blah. It's his first start at Manchester United in the Premier League. I cannot sit here and criticise him because it's his first start at Manchester United in the Premier League. And 
again, he was pressing a lot. He was getting stuck in. He was trying to be as he was trying to get stuck in, trying to be as aggressive as he can. He was trying to, you know, impress the fans, his teammates, and the manager. And yeah, when he came off, there was no. Oh, he was sure he was this. He was that. He just done what he had to do. You know what you expect from a young lad who's nineteen years of age. You know, and I look. I hope he can has a future at Manchester United. And because Ten Hag said he rates him more than Pellistri. I'm not sure if he said about Ahmad too, but I don't think he did. Um, but yeah, hopefully he can burst into the squad. And um, not, well, he's already in the squad, but he's got a few goals. Because look, I feel like once you get that first goal from Manchester United as a youngster, it'll just carry a carry on. Look at Kobe made him. You know, look at him. Next up is... Mar- and let us know your thoughts on Mary Forrest on today. Uh, next up is Marcus Rashford. Rashford today, my God. Another player who came through the academy. Our attacking line was actually Academy, wasn't it? Garnacho, Academy. Warson, Academy. Rashford, Academy. <laughs> Again, you look at the Buzzy Babes. Much United through the years have, have, been, have been successful with the Academy. Um, now you look at Camboale. He's come through the Academy. Um, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. Rashford today just wasn't out of it. Wasn't tracking back, wasn't getting stuck in, wasn't making blocks, was just just look lazy, slow, sluggish. I don't know what's up with Marcus Rashford at the moment. And I'm, 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 I'm low strain if ever I give Marcus Rashford. Low strain, I think I've given on the channel so far since we started these player ratings videos is Rashford. That's a tree. Just wasn't it to be. Just wasn't to be today. And it worries me. It really, really worries me about Marcus Rashford because he's not getting stuck in. He's not tracking back. He's not boasting a go. He's more jogging than, you know, fucking running his socks off. You know, he's not doing that. And um, it just wasn't to be there for Rashford. And yeah, again, another player who doesn't look confident. He just doesn't seem to be at it. Manchester United. And uh, look, if it, it appears, no team is going to want to come crawling. Why would they want to come crawling for a player? players who are lazy, sluggish, don't track back? And I'll secure better as the money. But look, I'll give Mark Shrashford a three. I'll move on because if I don't, I'll say something that will get me in trouble. Um, next up is Scott McTominay. Just fairly quick. Again, a four. Came on. Didn't really do much. Wasn't the, I don't think it was the impact Ten Hag would have wanted, which was no impact. And uh, yeah, a, a four from me. Again, Christian Eriksen came on. Didn't really do a lot. Had a few balls into the box. Probably had a more glory than... Tommy whipping a lot of balls in, and uh, look, yeah, another four for me. The subs just weren't at it today. Next up is the manager Eric Ten Hag. Uh, look, can't question him over the team. So maybe say he should have started Anthony. So maybe say he should have started Ahmad. So maybe say you should have, I don't know, started Johnny Evans. So may say you should have started Amabat Eric. I don't know. So maybe seen the team like quite firmly. You know, but if there was arguments, some would say should have started Ahmad or Anthony. The team that was picked today that he picked, I cannot question about that. Uh, Premier Sports um, had the coverage for the game, and Ten Hag's in trouble. We went on a winning streak, we lose the game, and Ten Hag's in trouble. I know people keep saying stop using injuries as an excuse, but you see the way we're playing when we had our main players back, like Leach and and. Um, Shaw and, and and well Rasmus, you can see when them players are out we struggle. But no, Liverpool have injuries. I Manchester City have injuries, and Arsenal have injuries, and Newcastle have injuries, uh, Aston Villa have injuries, and they get away with it. But Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag don't uh, fuck off. Look, I'm not happy with Manchester United today, Ten Hag anyone. But it just pisses off that other teams get away with it, and we don't. But look, Ten Hag gets a four for me. I still back him. It's going to be interesting to see what happens between now and the summer. Will it be here come this time next season? I don't know. Only time will tell. Only few, only 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 God can tell. I can tell us that, right? Only the future, right? Um, and uh, or the devil can tell us whatever. But yeah, for me, Manchester United, I just feel like when we have a play, like, you know, we, we could tell we 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 are struggling without Shaw, Leicher. And Rasmus today. And I never thought I'd say that. With Rasmus especially because when he came here it just looked like this wasn't going to be the man. Now he's he was on hot form and 
now he's out injured for two to three weeks, so he's going to miss the derby, he's going to miss the game against Forest. he's going to be back maybe the start or the middle of March, you know, you just cannot say, oh, he's this, he's in trouble, because this isn't, this isn't this, for me, shut the fuck up media, and all Ten Hag fans will be celebrating, all the people who want Ten Hag out will be loving life, Look, my man of the match is Alejandro Garnacho. Reason being, he got the higher rating and he looked more of a Royce Park off the bench. Who else can I give it to? Who do I really want to give it to? So on, so on, so on, so on. But look, that's been my player ratings for the game against Fulham. Please let us know your thoughts on my player ratings in the comment section below and give us your player ratings as well. You can rate all the players and the manager and give us your player of the match as well. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Five talk much video should be out either on a Sunday or on a Monday. Thank you for watching, like the video, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell to get notified every time we go live, post the video, and please follow our social links in the description, we much, much appreciate it, we're trying to go to the channel, we're trying to do a lot of work behind the scenes, I'm trying to do a lot of work behind the scenes to grow and, and impress people, and uh, look, if the social, the links in this comment section don't work, comment in the comment section, whatever link that doesn't work, and I will send you the link as well. Thank you for watching, I'll speak to you on the next one, peace.